Hi, today I'm going to talk about the RASP, the Runtime App Self Protection Solution. So the RASP is a solution that is tightly coupled with the code. So that's why you will see the purposely built uh, RASP for the Java, for PHP, for C. Right? So it's a highly environmentally dependent compared to WAF and is somehow considered a complementary solution to WAF, right? Because WAF is pattern based or signature based, uh, it's a regular expression based. A kind of a security solution to secure your web app. So in production, people usually run these two solutions together right, to complement each other because uh, the RASP definitely can apply more complicated logic, uh, more uh, complex algorithm right, to detect the threats. Um, and uh, this kind of uh, algorithm and logic will not be implemented onto the WAF due to the performance. And uh, in terms of effectiveness, uh, the WAF usually give higher, a relatively higher uh, false positive or false negative rate than the RASP. However, the WAF is still uh, most commonly used the parameter security solution, right, uh, in your environment. So, um, first of all, I'm going to show you a quick demo of uh, how we can run them together to complement each other, right. So I myself will be simulating as attacker. And uh, the first one I'm going to hit is the NGX serving as a reverse proxy. That is integrated with the more security, which is the open source WAF. And then uh, on the back end, I have the com com uh, Tomcat that is integrated with the open RASP, which is the open source RASP solution. And on top of that, I have the vulnerable site created that I'm going to target. So the first use case I'm going to perform is the mass scan. Uh, and it will be immediately blocked by the WAF. And the second one, I'm going to purposely bypass the WAF by using the command injection, and eventually will be blocked by the open RASP. So like, uh, let's dive deep uh, into the demo first. Okay, so in the demo environment, um, 192.168.0.112 is a target site. First of all, I'm going to query it uh, to see if it's reachable. Everything return as normal, and then I'm going to perform a mass scan to the uh, to the particular site, and you see, hey, it's actually uh, blocked, right? Blocked by mod security. If you were to check the audit log of the mod security over here, you see that actually uh, it's blocked. And the second use case is going to show you is going to do some like command line injection into the HTTP request. And over here, uh, I'm going to um, uh, inject the command that is to show the, all the directory, including the hidden directory. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to hit the button, and you'll see it's actually blocked by the open rasps. Right? However, uh, uh, the reason it can uh, be blocked by the open rasp uh, is uh, the uh, command line injection actually bypassing the WAF. Right, cause the WAF don't have the pattern to match that. On the code level, how the open RASP works is actually matching this one, uh, this logic, right, to detect whether there's a command line that is uh, embedded into the request. So, back to the slides over here. So, RASP techniques. Right, so we're going to uh, explain uh, roughly three different uh, techniques. Uh, uh, that is uh, commonly used. So the first one is still considered a sort of a pattern-based or signature-based protection, but in terms of the logic and the algorithm itself is more complicated than those we usually implement onto the WAF. So if someone tells you that the, the RAS solution is totally patternless, 100% signatureless, that's actually mm, uh, not true, right? You should be spectable on that. Uh, however, it can definitely apply more complicated, uh, more comprehensive logic than the WAF itself. So, uh, the pattern signature is actually si uh, specific to each of the workloads. For example, for Java, the back end, the PHP, for the front end. And the second one is the tokenization that is usually to detect the uh, SQL injection. And the third one is the CFI, the control flow integrity, that is, a, uh, that is to detect those like uh, return-oriented programming-based attacks or memory-based attacks. Uh, 
that's, that is usually on C, right? Because the C, in terms of the memory protection, uh, it, 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 it's not as good as other uh, programming languages like Java. So, first one is the pattern of signature specific to the workload, right? So, let's have a look at uh, the patterns over here, the logic over here, right? So, like the one I showed you earlier, right? So, that is to see whether there's a command line that is embedded. And over here, right, it's just simply to check the length, right? If it's exceeding certain length, then I'm going to right, uh, get that blocked. So basically, uh, the open Rust solution or any kind of a Rust solution have certain levels of the patterns of signature being implemented. So if you're saying that it's 100% pattern or signature list, it's actually uh, not true. And the second mechanism is called a tokenization. So for example, I have a SQL injection over here. There's a query that uh, contains right, a string of A equals string of A. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tokenize this particular uh, query. As you see that they have a 0, 1, 2, 3 different slots over here. So how I'm going to do the verdict, how I'm going to identify it. So you see that uh, whenever an input is going across more than one token slots over here, right? Because you see that it's going across from 9 to 11, right? And then I'm going to... Uh, get that detected and then uh, com uh, come back with a verdict saying that, hey, uh, it's actually a SQL injection. And the third mechanism is called the control flow integrity. So that is usually uh, used to uh, detect those like memory-based attack or the return-oriented uh, programming attacks. Uh, and uh, basically the platform that is written in C uh, is most vulnerable Right, cause the C right requires the developer to allocate the memory, uh, not like Java, right, uh, or other like programming languages has a very good uh, memory protection mechanism over here. But the concept is really simple. So there are a different variety of the control flow integrity, but now most commonly used or most effective one, I would say that is considered the shadow stack, right? The shadow stack is the additional chunk of the memory created that is to store are the validated return addresses of the, each of the function uh, that is created uh, when the application is running the clean environment. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, so, uh, so, um, supposedly for example, for the particular function A, the return address is something like 0x0000000f. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, However, whenever uh, uh, it detects that, uh, okay, the same function A, however, the return address is somewhere else, for example, uh, a, B, C, then now going to block the particular action that is taken. So basically this is how it works for the control flow integrity. So in terms of the performance impact, uh, I would say that it's less than like uh, 5 to 10% uh, based on uh, the research uh, of uh, several uh, RASP vendor that implement this mechanism. Uh, of course, the control flow integrity is considered relatively old techniques Right, that is uh, firstly introduced back then in 20 or 2005 or 6. Uh, back then, it's not that practical, it's because of uh, it's really impactful to the CPU and RAM utilization. But now, since right, the CPU RAM utilization, uh, CPU RAM, uh, I mean, the, the computing power has been significantly increased, so that's why uh, the performance impact today is more and more negligible. Right, so that's why you see more and more vendor has been implementing this like control flow integrity uh, into their Rust solution. So that's all for my introduction. Hope it's helpful.